Okay, welcome everybody. This is uh, our talk in the Open Networking and Edge Summit about building the cloud native reference architecture for Telco Cloud, uh, which is an update on R Anuket RA2, and we will unpack all of these cryptic things from the title of the talk during the, the talk. Uh, my name is uh, Gergely Chatari, and I'm working in the uh, Open Source Program Office of uh, of Nokia as a senior Open Source Specialist, and my partner in crime. Hello, I am Riccardo Gasparetto Stori. I uh, am the Workstream Lead for uh, Anuket RA2, and uh, my current role is Principal Cloud Architect for Vodafone Group, where I oversee the strategy and architecture of cloud platforms for networks. Very good. So let's start a bit uh, from the uh, from explaining uh, what is our, our agenda. So we will um, uh, discuss what is Anuket at all, what is the aim of Anuket and how it tries to achieve it. Then we will talk a bit uh, about the, the specification projects inside Anuket and then focus on, on specifically uh, the reference architecture too. Uh, and then we will cover uh, the history of, of, of Area 2, so what, what, uh, what happened in the past, and then, then we will look a bit into the, to the future. And of course, we will explain to you how to get involved in the work, what we are doing there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's uh, talk about uh, Anuket in general a bit. So the aim of Anuket is to uh, define, build, and uh, conformance test reference cloud infrastructures for telecommunications. Uh, and this is to enable the faster integration of the infrastructures and the applications running on these, uh, uh, these infrastructures. Uh, and this is done in a way that that uh, Anuket runs uh, several quote unquote sub projects. So there are uh, the specification projects, what we will cover uh, in this talk a bit more um, uh, detailed. So we have the, the re reference model, which is an abstract uh, model of a, of a cloud infrastructure. We have the reference architecture, reference, reference implementation, and reference conformance. I will talk about these a bit more in a bit more detail in the next slide, but let's talk uh, about the rest of the projects. So Anuket also provides um, uh, or hosts uh, feature projects, which are actual implementations of, of specific, specific features uh, exploring uh, different technologies. It also uh, provides uh, projects which are testing either cloud infrastructures or specific parts of uh, cloud infrastructures. It's it uh, hosts uh, uh, test tooling and deployment projects, and also it hosts uh, a laboratory as a service uh, for the the participants of the of the project. So from all of these uh, uh, different projects, uh, let's focus on the on the specification projects uh, in the next slide, where I will describe how these projects uh, are interacting with each other. So the first one is the is the reference model. This is an abstract model of a cloud infrastructure describing all the properties uh, in a non-technology specific way uh, and assigns uh, specific um, values to these properties. And from these uh, from this reference model, there are uh, two reference architectures created, which are technology specific. There is one for OpenStack and there is one for Kubernetes. And these are uh, specifications of cloud infrastructures uh, from the applications point of view. So here we specify uh, what kind of properties a Kubernetes or OpenStack based cloud infrastructure should have to run the workloads without uh, any problem. And our focus uh, today is the Kubernetes-based reference architecture, which is also referred as uh, RA2. Uh, based on these reference architectures, there are reference implementations, which are actual uh, integrated solutions, what, uh, which uh, uh, could be installed by anyone and tried by anyone. And these reference implementations are compliant 
with, uh, with the specifications of the reference architectures. And of course, because of this, they are also compliant with the, with the reference model. Now the question is how to test if something is, uh, is compliant. Uh, the solution for that is, a, is a, a set of conformance tests, which are defined in the reference conformance uh, projects. Uh, and we have a conformance test set for OpenStack, and we have one conformance test set for, for Kubernetes. And these are uh, based on the tooling uh, of the testing projects of, uh, of Anuket. Um, so in the next slide, I will I will discuss a bit about the focus of of uh, of uh, reference architecture two. Uh, what we wanted to avoid is to specify everything. So we had to like draw the lines, and uh, uh, we draw a line in, in a way that we do not specify uh, CNFs themselves. So they are. They are the applications which are running on these infrastructures. Uh, we specify uh, everything which is in the infrastructure and effects how the CNS is executed. So we are specifying um, uh, the orchestration layer itself, so Kubernetes. We are specifying uh, all the all the extensions of Kubernetes which are critical to to run the workload. So we have specifications around, for example, what kind of CNIs uh, uh, do we expect? We have we have uh, expectations on, on the different other uh, uh, extensions of Kubernetes. And also we are we are specifying uh, on some level the lifecycle management of, of Kubernetes or, or or at least we are specifying requirements uh, to these. So for the details of what is specified and how do we specify, uh, I hand over to Ricardo. Thank you, Gergi. And uh, yes, so this is the progress so far. Uh, this is the structure of the RA2 documentation divided in, in chapters. Uh, here I will explain what exactly each chapter does and uh, at uh, which point we are with fleshing out the content. So we start with the architecture requirements uh, and an overview. Of course, uh, these are the requirements that come from the reference model, and we use this to trace what the requirements uh, mean in terms of uh, specification and building blocks later in the document. The third chapter introduces a high level architecture of what the building blocks of the CAS, uh, the Kubernetes platforms are and uh, how do they interface with each other. And uh, of course, what each building block does. Uh, that uh, that will be, uh, of course, uh, uh, similar to the diagram that Gergi was showing earlier. The component level architecture is uh, the substantial, most substantial part of uh, the document. Here we introduce all the specs and the rules uh, for the clusters to be compliant with this architecture. So here we'll have rules about nodes, about sizing, about the processes of the Kubernetes control plane. A lot of space is uh, for networking and uh, uh, plugins and extensions of Kubernetes clusters. So that's a rather important topic. And of course, we have uh, policy, uh, specs on storage and uh, requirements for workloads, uh, for example, packaging uh, that that is uh, for consumers of the platform to ensure that the workloads can be onboarded on top of on top of the Kubernetes clusters compliant with this architecture. The chapter five is also uh, about security, so policies and rules for uh, security and uh, uh, for class clusters. And chapter six is the link between uh, the architecture and the conformance testing here. We map the specifications and the rules from the earlier chapters to special interest group features and functional tests in Funk tests from the Funk test project that, of course, are being run to certify that an implementation is compliant with this architecture. So this chapter acts as a link between the architecture and the and the conformance testing. 
Finally, in chapter seven, we uh, talk about what is missing. So what are the gaps, uh, what innovation projects uh, we're tracking and what developments uh, are happening in the ecosystem. And here, of course, we have a lot of uh, feedback and uh, new items that are coming from, from various actors. So uh, if anybody wants to contribute, uh, absolutely feel we are welcome to add your input. We finish with an appendix. Uh, on multi-tenancy, so this is about uh, separation uh, of workloads uh, on, on the same platform in a way that um, they can they can be isolated and not interfere with each other on on a common platform. So this is uh, the document structure and what uh, uh, we've done so far in the uh, in the past releases. Uh, the release schedule. Is, uh, is, is as follows. So we've uh, targeted the three releases on average per year. We are working on the seventh release. We've just released the sixth Kali in June. And the content uh, creation is in progress uh, for the next one, like else. The, at the beginning of each release, we decide which milestones uh, and uh, what dates are we going to hit with these milestones. So of course, we're going to decide what to do, what is the scope each, for each project in Anuket for that release. Um, so we, uh, we decide what issues, for example, in Array2, what, uh, what capabilities of uh, Kubernetes uh, and uh, what uh, sections of the document uh, we, we have to update for this release uh, in the first few weeks. Then, of course, the bulk of the work is concentrated in the third milestone, the content uh, gets produced uh, in the central months. And then, of course, we finish with uh, proofreading and make sure that the release is uh, uh, ready for publication. Uh, this will happen, for example, in, at the beginning of December for the current release. So uh, the last release uh, was uh, Kali. And uh, what we did in, in, in that um, is uh, uh, summarized in this slide. So we've uh, mapped a specific uh, release of Anuket to a specific release of Kubernetes. So for example, 121 for Kali, and we will target 122 for Lakels for the version 7. Then we've added uh, API and uh, feature gate specifications uh, uh, so that it is clear what APIs and features are mandatory for uh, um, for implementations to be compliant with the architecture. Uh, and for example, the policy here is to just allow GA and beta APIs and features. We had a concept of node profiles uh, to um, that uh, that uh, label nodes depending on um, uh, hardware specifications and the ability to host uh, general purpose or network intensive uh, workloads. But uh, we've extended uh, that concept by adding extension labels uh, that uh, assist in, uh, in a more granular fashion uh, by labeling things like hardware acceleration uh, configurations uh, or latency uh, configuration or even geographical distribution of nodes such as edge versus core. And then we added functional blocks that are relevant for uh, telco workloads. So we've added the definition of custom resources and operators. Um, things that are very important for hardware acceleration. So device plugin, uh, node feature discovery are also have also been added. We've added a memory manager and Synkey as well. Uh, we've also added new specs uh, for high availability and network resiliency of the Kubernetes control plane. Of course, uh, in telco environments, it's a very important topic. Uh, um, and, uh, and we uh, have commitment to ensure the highest standards for platform availability. And uh, finally, we've also started introducing the concepts of cluster lifecycle management. So we've introduced the definitions of a CAS manager, which is the entity that manages the lifecycle of uh, uh, Kubernetes clusters. 
For the next uh, uh, release, uh, like else, we have uh, freeze, frozen the scope uh, and uh, the work is in progress on the content. Uh, so this slide shows you what we are targeting uh, for, for this release. Uh, we're targeting the upgrade to Kubernetes 122. That includes uh, deprecating all the APIs and features that were removed and are not supported anymore from this release, but also adding all the new features and APIs that are um, available in this new release of Kubernetes. We've also added uh, uh, specs on the service types. So for uh, Kubernetes ingresses, it is uh, important to uh, clarify what types of uh, uh, service Kubernetes services are allowed, for example, load balancer or node port uh, and so on. And, and that will allow the workloads to consume and expose services in a standardized fashion. And then, of course, uh, uh, CAS clusters uh, are, can be implemented uh, in many ways. Uh, the main two flavors are the, with nodes based on virtual machines or bare metal nodes. So for the for the former, uh, where vir uh, the worker nodes uh, are implemented uh, with virtual machines, uh, of course, uh, it is important uh, to have uh, assurance about deterministic performance uh, and uh, uh, latency that, uh, that must be ensured. So we are adding a number of specifications uh, about the hypervisor level configuration that must be implemented in order to guarantee such performance when the clusters are implemented on top of a, on top of a virtualization platform. Another hot topic is uh, uh, CNI multiplexers that allow us to uh, attach multiple network interfaces to the pods. So uh, the state of the art in the ecosystem today uh, implementations of multiplexer are uh, have different APIs, so that reduces is, uh, that limits the portability of a workload that uh, is implemented on a certain platform with a multiplexer to a different platform with a different multiplexer. Mm -hmm. So we're looking to specify uh, what APIs of or what solutions uh, can uh, uh, can be implementation agnostic. So to assist uh, sort of uh, uh, portability between platforms. Finally, we're uh, um, adding also specification on uh, edge cloud. So for uh, uh, radio network functions uh, and uh, uh, things like distributed core that uh, that would uh, mean um, platforms and uh, clusters uh, with a lower latency to the final users. And we're also adding uh, service function chaining, which is uh, the stitching of multiple network functions uh, together uh, in a way that uh, allows the user to manage them together and of course uh, configuring configure them in such a way that the traffic can traverse them in a chain. We're also aligning them uh, the security specifications with the reference model in chapter five and uh, we are increasing the uh, support uh, um, uh, and the uh, explicitly by explicitly listing Kubernetes APIs and features that must be implemented uh, in order to be compliant uh, with the architecture. So the uh, that that would uh, uh, that would include upstream APIs and features that we think are necessary for any implementation to have to host the telco workloads. With uh, um, uh, some also adding specs on workload isolation, so how to have a multi-tenant platform with uh, including namespaces. Uh, and finally, uh, CNF packaging, which means how to package binaries and artifacts uh, of a containerized network function in such a way that makes it uh, portable between environments. So I'll uh, hand over back to Gergely uh, for information on how to join us. Thank you. Thank you very much. And as you could hear from Ricardo, we need uh, more helping hands to do all of the specification work, which is uh, uh, listed in our, our, our plan for for the current and future releases. Uh, and if you would like to have 
uh, more information about the project plan, then you can check the the project on on, on GitHub. That's the last link from the from the slide. Uh, there uh, are all the issues which are planned for the current release and other related uh, uh, pull requests uh, listed. Feel free to join to the discussion, or or if some uh, uh, issue doesn't have an owner yet, then then uh, you can just uh, pick it up and start working on that. Um, the reference architecture tool uh, team has a regular meeting every week uh, on Thursdays from three o'clock UTC. You can get the the Zoom link and the meeting invite from the from the uh, Anuket meetings wiki page, which is listed on the on the slide here. Uh, also, you are welcome to join any other uh, Anuket meetings. Everything is uh, is public. Uh, what is happening in in Anuket? Also, you can join to our our uh, mailing list where we discuss uh, uh, technical topics um, about uh, the reference architecture, and uh, you can you can uh, browse or even contribute to our our wiki page where we basically handle all the all the management related things uh, uh, around the the project. You can get, you can. Um, read the the specification document in the reader docs link uh what is on 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 the slide and um uh in the reader docs we are publishing uh both the the master branch uh, under the latest uh url and all the all the releases so if you check the 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 link which is on the slide you can you get the the actual latest uh, state of the specifications. Of course, if you are interested in a frozen version, then then you can select that one also uh, using the Read the Docs uh, user interface. So with this, um, I would like to thank you, and I would like to encourage you to post your questions uh, into the meeting platform. We are happy to address them. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Yes, let us know.